All right, students. So moving ahead with the constraints, the next constraint is unique constraint. Unique constraint deals with all the values in a certain column have to be different. That is, you cannot enter the same value, the same duplicate value into another row. So if you want to avoid this happening, this constraint is utilized over here. That is, once used unique constraint, you cannot enter duplicate values in that particular column. Each and every entry in that particular column has to be unique. Okay, so the syntax goes something like this, very simple, you create a table, table name, you start giving the column name, you give the data type of the column, and then you enter the constraint called as unique, right? Once you give this constraint, you'll not be able to enter duplicate value in that particular column, right? Let's see how this happens in SQL. All right, guys, so I'll use the same table. What I'll do is I'll just drop the table I neuron so that you know we can restart making the table by the constraint now i'll run this again all right and this time what i'll do is i'll instead of in this create table what i'll do is i'll give a constraint of unique over here unique as the constraint for the table course name because i don't want the course name to repeat now if i just run this it's going to run and let me run the insert values that we have already done and let me select star from i neuron i'll just run this query again right uh, so it reflects the database that we have okay 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 probably i haven't run this or what i'll just run this as well and now if i select this now it is giving me both the cases over here. Now, if I just take another, now that I've given this a unique constraint, I don't want the course name to repeat. So I'll just try and repeat that course name over here, see what happens. So insert into a neuron 204, and I'll go for full stack again. And let's say I go for Vikas over here, right? So I enter and I run this, it's going to throw an error that the duplicate entry full stack for key column course name, which is not allowed. Now, if I change this and let's say I go for, let's say SD, software development, right? Then in that case, it's going to take the constraint, right? And now if you look at it, if you run this particular query and you can see there are three courses created with three different course name, author and everything. There is no start date given over here. Okay, so start date is coming out to be null in each and every case. Let's move on to the next type of query, which is our check query. Check constraint over here is basically to check a certain condition on a certain column. For example, you want a certain column under certain condition. For example, salary cannot be negative. So you want to ensure that whatever you enter over here, by mistake, somebody should not press a negative and then enter the column. Now, if you don't go for that, it might so happen that the salary might come out to be negative. Right. So that is something that I like to avoid in the database and check is that particular constraint which is helping us do that. So let's see the syntax. Syntax again, pretty simple. Create table, table name. We go for the column name. We go for the data type of the column name and then we input the condition based on we want to check this out. Right. So it's simple. Column name, data type, input the constraint which is check and then in the parenthesis input the condition which you want to check for this particular column. Let's see this in SQL. So let's say I want to put up, I want to add another column over here. So I'll go for alter table, the table name, which is I neuron, and I want to add a column, and that column name is, let's say number of underscore sessions that I plan for that particular course. Okay. And let it be integer. And I want to check a certain condition that number of session must be greater than let's say I provide at least 10 sessions in a certain course. So I'll not be able to enter anything which is less than 10 or even equal to 10. So if I just run this query and see that select star from i neuron i run this and i get this number of sessions are null for rest of them but i'll start entering the values over here now now i have ensured that the number of sessions over here is okay i'm not able to see the query where i've run it okay just a minute just a minute Right, I think it's there now. Cool. Great. So I'll if I go for let's say let me run it over here only. So let's start from I neuron and 
cool now this is where it looks like now let me try and insert some values over here and i'll go for the same query i like to insert some values i'll insert i neuron course id course name author and then finally i go for number of sessions right that's the one right number of session and i go for 205 and i go for let's say product management and let's say the author is let's say Saurabh again now I can enter Saurabh over here that is something which is good and I enter the number of sessions to be let's say nine now if I look at it this ideally should not run this will throw an error if I run it it is throwing an error it says that the check constraint is violated over here and the check constraint is whatever the number of session you're going to enter you have to enter it greater than 10 now if i make it 19 now if i insert the values over here it will get inserted and now i can run this so let's start from i neuron and i'll be able to see that the number of sessions are 19 over here one good thing is Saurabh and Saurabh gets repeated over here because in the author column, I haven't given the unique constraint. Now, had I given a unique constraint in author column as well, now this entry would have been rejected for two reasons, initially two reasons, that this was less than 10 and this was duplicate entry. But as the unique constraint was not given on author, duplicate entries were allowed over here, right? Let's move on to the next one, which is our next particular constraint, the default constraint. The default constraint is basically if I am entering a null value, for example, I forgot to enter any kind of value in a certain column. Default says that if there is a null value, replace it with this particular value. For example, if there is no entry for a certain number of projects, let's say, right? Uh, let's say I enter number of projects and, and there is no entry. Default says that by default, you put this particular value in place of that particular null place, right? Let's see. What is the constraint that we're looking at? What is the syntax of this one? Again, pretty simple. Create table, table name, column name, data type. And you input default, the constraint, and the value that you want to put in. And you continue till, of course, your column names are defined, right? So this is the syntax. Let's see this in SQL. Okay, so in SQL now, let me alter the table and add another column, which is my number of projects right uh, it is to be integer and i don't want to go for check condition i'm going for a default now default says and i'll just have to go for the value here and the default is let's say six now if i run this query okay this is going some kind of error what is it let's see okay okay there is some kind of error let me see this okay the parenthesis will not come over here i'm so sorry for this the parenthesis will not come and now if i run this I'll be able to add the column in the table and now see what happened if I go for select star from I neuron and run this you'll see that the number of projects are six because all of them were null it by default if I have not made any entry over there by default it takes the number of projects as six over there okay this is a default constraint 